So today I thought I would shoot some video while I do a little bit of painting on these pieces that I fused using the crushed bottle glass and try to get this up close. Again, I think I shared with this before because I do crush the glass in a neutral bullet. There is tendencies to get some little bits of plastic. I'll try to get some still pictures of this so you can actually see it better. And you can see little flecks in there. But because I'm painting these, I that doesn't really bother me, and it doesn't seem to affect the fusing process. Um, but I am using for these, I'm using the PBO or PBO Vitria 160 paints. Um, these are really easy to apply. It takes very little. I use the I was calling them sponge dabbers, but I believe they're called stipplers. Dabblers are the little just thin-edged, stiffer pieces. Um, but I also have for small areas, I picked these up thinking they would work. They're not great, but they do. Um, they do function. They're just little eyeshadow applicators. You can get a bunch of them in a matchbook type case for probably a dollar or so. Um, but for the dragonfly, uh, I think that I did these same colors on another one or two. This is the Azure or Azure Blue. Uh, <laughs> these are all words that are hard to pronounce, I guess. Amaranthine, which is a purple and anise seed or anise that is a green and also what i have on hand is some of the iridescent medium i'm going to use just a little bit of that as well as black and i probably won't apply the black until later when it's all done and i'll just kind of touch up the wings um, but i'll shoot some separate video for that um, basically what i have i just have my glass pieces that i'm going to paint i have some sponge applicators some paper towel or you could use a towel I've, I've got plenty of flower sack towels as well just a surface that I can paint on and oftentimes what you'll see me do is I I'll get the paint onto this but then I'll kind of stipple it onto another surface first before I touch the glass um, so anyway I am going to start with I think I'll start with the inner wings and I'm going to go with some purple And it really does just take a tiny amount, um, about as much as what's going to be on my stir stick here will go a long ways. And I know these have been used and abused. I, I don't do a good job of washing them out right away every time, um, but I have an idea of just making some with some sponge and some dowels, and I think I can make them much cheaper than you can even buy them. But as you can see, I've got some on the stir stick. And I'll just kind of set that stir stick aside in case I need to re-stir that. These I like, they're small enough that I can actually get them down in the bottle if I want to add more. Um, for this, I don't think I'm going to dab it onto anything else. I am going to put some green and kind of fan out um, from the center, so I'm going to start this a little further over. And to start with, hopefully you can see. it up here so you can see a little better. What I like about using these sponge applicators is about as quickly as you put it on there it almost dries to the touch so you really don't have to let it air dry too long before you want to turn it over and do another side if you choose to do both sides. Now the first little bit I'm going to put on there and I'm just going to call that good until I get my other colors and then I'll start blending them in a little bit. So I'm going to set this guy over here because I know I'm going to use it again. Let's do the green for the body. I love this color. Actually, I really liked all of these paints that I've used so far. I found them at Blick Art Supplies. I, I believe I've even seen them uh, locally here down at Glass and Dubbers. I think they have some PBOs, but I'm not sure if it's the same line, so don't quote me. Um, I've heard some people have found them at, at uh, Michael's in the past. I, I've not had good luck with that, um, and I didn't find any of this at Hobby Lobby, but maybe I wasn't looking in the right place. So again, just about as much as I have on my stir stick. I'm going to start down the body. And I'm 
to fan it out to the inside of the wings here. And as it dries a little bit, you can come back and add more, um, which I'm sure I'll do. I'll end up adding another color down here. I'll probably even actually use some of the purple. So for this one, I do need a little bit more, but not quite that much. I can really use a paper towel instead of messing up my cardboard right away. Another way you can do it, and I have before, is have a sheet of glass here, just a scrap piece. That way it's easier to just dab onto the glass and pick it back up when you want to use some more of it. Because as you can see, if I put it on the paper towel, it's going to soak in. I do paint both sides of these. Um, you wouldn't have to. But again, I, I let them sit for a while and dry before I go back and get the other side. So now I'm going to start kind of blending this in with the purple a little bit. Then I'm even going to take that purple and come down the body. You could do this with other colors as well. You can see that. And now the third color I'm going to add, for the first step here, is the blue. imagine applying them in this fashion, a bottle of this will probably last quite a while. Let's see how this blue looks. That I'm going to blend in with the purple as well. Kind of see here where it, add, where it blends in with the purple, it gives it like two shades of blue. I guess I shouldn't have closed that one up. I'm going to need more blue. So there is a first pass with three different colors. Now I can come back and I will come back and add a little more color. I'm going to let this sit and dry a bit, uh, but I will shoot some more video when I get ready to apply a little bit of the iridescent. Um, you can mix this directly in with the paint. I did that on some pink on another dragonfly. I don't have that one in front of me. Um, or you can just take a paintbrush or probably one of these um, applicators and just apply little bits of it, uh, but I'll show you that in just a bit. While I'm waiting for this first dragonfly to dry a little bit more, I thought I would share another experiment I did. This was with the Sky Vodka Bottle, and I don't think I'll do another one. Um, it seemed like it, it must take a hotter temperature because I still have a lot of little bumpy areas. I did take this over to the sander so it does look a little kind of rough on the finish. And I'm not too worried because I thought, you know what, other than scrap them, I think I'll try applying some paints. So my first thought was, hey, what happens if I just apply a little bit of this pink? And this is, yeah, this is just called pink, pink rose, I think it's called. Again, added some, put it on here. I, and I did notice by accident something when you're using these. If you don't like it, you can kind of just go like that and literally wipe it back off. Um, but I do want to use some of that. Unfortunately, I used a larger sponge here, so let's get our paint. What I thought I would do is paint the surface of the blue, and again, I'll do front and back. Maybe start with one good base color, and I'll probably add some darker along here, as well as some black outlining, and then try the iridized as well. So already, to me, except for the dog hair, I love my puppies, but they end up everywhere. I really 
really do kind of like this color. I see the kind of the groove in between the wings. I'm going to press down a little bit to fill that in as well. And if anybody's had good luck with the Sky Vodka bottles and what the temps are, I'd, I'd love to hear it because I even did snowflakes and tried to slump them. Had them all the way up to, I believe, 1450 and they weren't budging. Um, so I, I don't know that I'd try this again. Plus, I don't drink that vodka, so <laughs> I don't usually have those bottles on hand. But Anyway, that is the blue and adding some paint. And I'll get a shot of that once I've got some more colors on there. But I thought I would just show the difference that you see between before and after adding a little bit of paint. So hopefully this one will turn out kind of cool when it's all done. I thought I would come back and show you a little more with this blue as I started working on it. Um, again, looked pretty rough and icky just when it was fused. But you know what? No despair. Uh, can always turn it into something else. And then I started playing with the iridescent medium. And what I did was I just took the iridescent medium and applied it all over the blue. And I'm going to do that here to show you on the other side. And then I used a little bit more of the purple, um, the amaranthine, I believe it's called. And just kind of added that around the edges like I would a black outline as well. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step through that real quick here. So sometimes our pieces don't turn out the way we want them to, but all is not always lost. So I think these are going to end up looking kind of cool. Got a piece of wax paper over here as well. So here's my kind of icky blue surface. And I'm just giving it an all over coat with the iridescent medium. feel like you're getting enough on there you can always let it sit for a bit and come back over it. I don't think I would glob a whole lot on it once. But there it already looks better I think. And I might even on the back side try some of the blue or I've got a couple colors of blue just to see if it makes the blue look any better. So there's the iridescent medium on there, and now I'm going to take a little more of the purple. I'm just going to start kind of going along the edges. And then just kind of over the top. Actually got a little more than I was going to go, but you know what? So be it. Come back over the other side. Might even add some green or brown down the body. So there is what was that really ugly blue. Still is pretty much on the back. And again, I think it's just that glass needed a different temperature. Um, but I think we can touch it up and make it look better with some paint. I wanted to show you on the one that I started with that is pretty much dry to the touch now, um, the back side. So if you really were only going to see the front side, you probably wouldn't need to paint the back. Um, especially on these clearer ones, but I will just to give a kind of uniform color all around. But I just wanted to show that to you. Again, front side, pretty much dry. I could go ahead and start painting the back. Again, here's a couple of them that were the blue glass to begin with. I've added some pink, purple, iridize, or iridescent medium. This one's been mostly pink and some green in the body. And the back side is still the icky blue. I haven't painted that yet. But.
wanted to share a little tip as far as how much color gets in the wings versus outlining. Uh, this one I really pushed on it, the little applicator to get the color in there, but when I first started putting it on here I thought it really gave it kind of a neat effect and it's more or less what I did with this piece, why there's a lot of stuff that's m more outlines. But what I thought I would do is show on another one, if I just take some of my pink, and really I could do this with any color. Uh, yeah, we'll do pink again. And all I did was kind of went around the edges and touched on the veins without really pushing down on it to soak it into the center part. So I just get a a subtle outlining. Now if I put more paint on I'm going to get more. But you get the idea if I just touch the tops I'm going to get the color under the tops whether it's pink or purple or whichever color you like to use. I'm just trying a few different things here. I do like to kind of tamp it down. I just have wax paper down. As I start getting a few done I'm running out of space though. And again, just kind of picking up the wing detail uh, by not pushing it all the way in. Where here, when I push the sponge down so that it gets in between, that's when the color soaks in between there. And you really kind of got it pushed, but at the same time, it dries really quick. So I don't know if you can tell in the video, but that is hardly wet once you've pushed down on that a few times. So just a couple tips as far as how you want to color. So I've been painting the dragonflies. I took you through a few steps and I just have a few examples. I don't want to handle them too much and mess them up because they're still a little wet. This one is mostly just more outlining with some pinks and I think it's Bengal pink down the center. Uh, some pink and blue and green. Um, the cobalt ones that I repainted, they're laying on their backs. So I'll show those in just a minute. Or they're laying on the front. You see the back. This one I really like. I'm going to have to bring it closer. It's emerald and a little irid just over the clear stuff in the veins. And then I used, I believe, Indian red in the body with a little bit of emerald over it. I haven't done the back of that one yet. But the one I'm going to do now that I thought I would show is this first one that I actually went through. Now I'm going to go back with some black and I'll more or less touch the edges and the veins like I did on this pink one here. And I've put a little bit of black on and then tamped it back down onto the wax paper. Again, very little paint. I've, I've hardly used any out of these bottles. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's outlining it. And I'll, I'll come down the body with it as well. Might have to actually get just a little bit more black, but maybe not. As you can see, when you push down on the little sponge, it, it does release a little bit. I just don't want to go down too far on these veins because I really don't want to color over all of my blue and purple. But again, a little bit in there is okay, like some speckles. Now I'm just going to take the black down here. There's that one. Let's see if I can pick it up a little better. And while I didn't demonstrate the butterflies, I still have to do those yet. Really, the process is going to be the same. As you can see in these, they're, they have raised textures just like the dragonflies do. I'll usually use some green through the body, some blues. Maybe look at some colors. I, I have a few what I call inspiration pictures when I find clip art or something with a neat color pattern. I'll save it into a, I actually call it glass inspiration album on my phone. Um, 
but you can get lots of ideas. Maybe you have a color theme for somebody or some certain colors that aren't even traditional butterfly or dragonfly colors, but I think the sky is the limit as far as your imagination. But anyway, I hope these tips have been helpful. Once again, my workspace becomes a mess, uh, but it's all good. I know where everything is, everything's within reach, and I'm able to get a few pieces done. I'm going to set them aside and enjoy the rest of this nice day we're having here in Minnesota. Hope you all are having a great weekend.